my current work revolves around how people make sense of the economic world around them. Their mental models of how economies work and their economic fairness views. Um, let me give two examples uh, for recent research and also that illustrate also why I think um, this matters. One project called Cello Meritocracy deals with the popular understanding of the idea of meritocratic fairness, which is quite fundamental to how our societies are organized. Meritocratic fairness means that we want to reward people for their merit in life, but it's unclear what merit means. Typically, we think that those who work hard, who exert effort in life, who make good decisions, should be rewarded for these decisions. But we don't want to hold people responsible for their circumstances they do not have any control over, such as whether they have rich or poor parents, whether they are black or white, male or female, these things are not supposed to matter in a meritocracy. But in the end, of course, these circumstances almost always affect the choices that people make, affect the incentives they face in life, the opportunities they have, and people respond to these incentives and opportunities. This affects their effort choices, whether they work hard or not, um, labor market choices, educational choices, and it raises a fundamental question to the idea of meritocracy, namely whether we want to hold others responsible for their choices, even when these choices reflect unequal circumstances, even when they are the product of unfair and unequal opportunities. So in this project, using both um, an online experiment and, and a vignette survey, I show that people actually neglect that circumstances often affect choices and hold others fully responsible for their choices, irrespective of whether or not they are the product, the choices are the product of their environment. And this, I think, matters greatly because it, it characterizes how meritocratic fairness is likely to be implemented in many practical contexts. Now, another example is my work with co-authors on subjective models of the macroeconomy. Here we ask the question, how do people think the economy works? There is a change in economic conditions. Let's say the government spends more money or the central bank raises interest rates. How does this affect inflation or unemployment? Every macroeconomic model takes a stance on these issues. Typically, they assume that agents form their expectations in line with the model, that they understand the underlying model. In our context, however, we find that households often have views on how the economy works that are opposite or different from those of experts. And there are very different views in the population. Some think government spending does not affect inflation or unemployment. Others think it does. Some think it increases unemployment. Others think it decreases unemployment. And this heterogeneity, of course, matters when people arrive, um, derive their macroeconomic expectations in practice. It might also matter for their policy support and their attitudes towards different policies. Yeah, there are quite many papers, books, lectures. I think uh, the continuous process of learning is actually one of the great privileges of doing the job, the part that uh, makes it a lot of fun for me. Now, I have to give one example. So here is one example. The work on Bayesian networks in economics by Rani Spiegler, Kefir Elias and others has influenced my work, um, particularly uh, more, more recent work. What they do is they take the idea of Bayesian updating, but allow that agents have different causal interpretations of the model. And that changes a lot. Agents have the same data, observe the same correlations, but because they have different models in their mind, they make different predictions for the future. Now, this theoretical work is quite ambitious. It's also technically very demanding, and I'm not a theorist, no. but it also requires an empirical counterpart. How do the actual mental models of people look like? How do they use them in order to interpret data, in order to form expectations? And this is really where my motivation came from. One of the reasons why I started the work on, for instance, subjective models of the macroeconomy and also more recent work. Yeah, so here's a problem that has puzzled me for quite a while now. Economists since decades have studied optimal policy in, in different contexts and in meticulous detail. But in practice, policymakers often 
don't even follow the most basic advice they give. Potentially because they cater to the understanding that lay people have about how economics works and to their fairness views. And this is precisely where I think behavioral economics can contribute. Trying to understand, as I said before, the mental models of lay people, of how the economy works and their fairness views and how this affects support for economic policies, the public debate and the kind of policies that are feasible in a political equilibrium. And I wouldn't have suggested that question if I didn't have an example from my ongoing work. So with co-authors, we are currently investigating which narratives are dominant about the recent rise of inflation in the US, which politically speaking and economically speaking is a high stakes development that we're currently observing in the US. And we see that um, lay people actually have very different, tell very different stories for why inflation increased than experts do. Um, they are simpler, more politicized, often focus on, on orthodox uh, channels like, like price gouging or, or profiteering. And we see that these narratives also affect the expectations that people have for future inflation. And extrapolating from the results, I guess, also affect their support for different policies like additional government spending programs or what they think about the current monetary policy of the Fed. This is just an example, and I think there remains a lot of work to be done. Uh, behavioral economics can contribute here, should, I think, contribute here, and I'm very much looking forward to the research that will evolve in this area. I'm Peter Andre, and I'm a postdoc at BRIC.